Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to continue on with this team that the roulette threw out for us yesterday. If you missed yesterday's episode, would like to go back and check out the first couple of games with this team. I'll link a card up there for you. you can go and check that out. Before coming into today's episode, obviously just to recap the team for you. So we've got the Feraligator, the Giratina, Infernip, Dialga. Tapu Koko and the Mega Galade. The team is down in the description below as always. And there is a roll pace, a poker pace. Check it out. Try it out if you'd like to. Um, but without further ado, I guess we'll just jump straight into today's episode. Because we had some really good games yesterday. Um, very close in our second one. Had a really good game to kick us off. So I'm hoping we can continue that momentum going forward today. It's, it's a really weird and unique team we didn't really get to feature the for alligator yesterday so i'm hoping we get to feature that today hopefully we can feature the, the mega galade but like that like magic we got benji from australia as our first opponent and as always guys if you do enjoy this content do make sure to leave a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and leave your comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the team composition what your ideas would be to change things up maybe going forward and anything to do with the roulette itself so let's get into team preview and see how we can prepare for this one today. So Benji, our first opponent, is running a team of Eveltal, Incineroar, the Kyogre, Tepcoco, a Scissor, and a Moongus. So quite a nice looking team. You've got the Eveltal Kyogre combination there. So probably more reliant on Tailwind rather than the Trick Room variants that you may see. We're tagged in on these sort of teams with something like Stack Attack or Bronzong. You've got the Scissors, probably going to be the Mega of the team. You're going to have Intimidate support from the Incineroar Fake Out support there to help set up some sort of Tailwind. Um, and then the Amoongus to disrupt with Redirection and Spore and things like that. So, um, Tapu Koko for us is a good lead because it does put a lot of pressure onto both restricted Pokemon that my opponent's got in the Aveltal and the, the Kyogre. And Infernape, obviously a faster fake out user than the Incineroar, so it's it's valuable to bring there. Um, I think I'll bring Giratina because it's just a decent Pokemon against things like Scissor and Kyogre as a switch in, but then probably Dialga is a bit better and then um, we're gonna bring we're going to bring for Alligator, I guess, because we've run out of time, because we're chatting too much in team preview. So, there you go. If you're at an event, don't chat too much. Just pay attention. Don't fall into my trap. But, hmm, I'm kind of happy with the, the selection that we've brought. And at least we bring for Alligator as well, especially with the rain up. If we can get it into a decent position, it's going to be hitting very hard. Sheer Force with the Life Orb. Uh, Liquidation is going to be KOing a lot of different stuff. So, I'm going to see the, the, uh, the Scissor and the Eveltal come out for my opponent first. I wonder if it's a Salt Vest Eveltal. Hmm. Let's have a look at the comp. Like, a good way to try and determine where the Z-move would be is look at the, the, the makeup of the team. I'd say it's probably on this team more likely it's on the Tapu Koko than anything else. So, I'm quite happy going for that Z-Wild Charge into the Eveltal which should get it and then just go for the fake out into the scissor just to stop it doing much this turn so we'll go for that see if we can pick up the knockout but gonna see the Eveltal switch out and Moongus hit the field so still gonna take a lot of damage regardless here um the scissor is revealing that it is mega scissor we are preventing from attacking this turn um i think it there's more evidence as well to show that the Ivelto is probably a Salt Vest switching out that first turn. If it had access to Protect, it probably we just sit on the field and Protect. We are wasting a Z-move, which is a bit unfortunate, but at the same time... Um, any damage onto the Moongus is going to be quite useful, and this should be decent damage. Hmm. not bad not bad um problem is here i can't really commit to a flare blitz because i feel like the kyogre will come in um and that's a big big problem for us kind of tempted to wild charge the amoongus again thinking that the kyogre comes in on that slot um And flare blitz 
This is a, because if the Kyogre does come in, this could totally backfire, by the way. But if it is the Kyogre and we do pick up the knockout, yeah, okay. With Tapu Koko, with the Wild Charge here, which we might be able to do, then, because we haven't been intimidated with Koko, so that's a big, big plus for us. Then the Flare Blitz from Iron Furnip will be able to take down the Scissor. Like I say, it's a, a, ma a hugely risky play. A massive risky play, you know. But it looks like it's actually going to pay off for us. So there we do. We do pick the Wild Charge. This is why, like, physical or mixed Coco is just so strong. It's got that ability to just cut through teams. And we are going to get the Flare Blitz off before the Scissor can do anything. And now... I don't really feel like my opponent's got too many options left. They've got the Evelta, which we probably know is a Soul Fest. We've got the Amoongus coming in, which is going to go down to a Flare Blitz from our Infernip. Um, and we, we, these two between them have kind of just picked apart these teams. Now, we do get pretty lucky with a prediction that we make. Obviously, you know, it could have went super wrong there. But it went super right, so we can't really complain too much about it. Um... This is this is one of the things about best of one. You've got to try and translate these things into a best of three for sure. Um, are we better off? Hmm. The rage powder. I mean, I'm just going to protect Coco here and just go for the flare blitz into the Amoongus. I'm thinking the the flare blitz will be enough to get the Amoongus. Just okay, my opponent forfeit. So very good game to my opponent, but I pick up a nice win. The only reason I protect Coco there is because the rage powder. We're not really going to do much, and then. Um, we don't want Coco taking any unnecessary damage, although we're probably fine in that situation, aren't we? So, we are 2-1 and one with the team, so that is great news for us. So, things are looking up and the team doing alright. And uh, we did bring Feraligator there, it didn't get featured, so hopefully this next match we can bring it and the Mega Gallade and we can have some action from both of those before we get into tomorrow's episode. But the team doing alright at the minute, let's lock in some music. Hmm, what are we going to go for? Let's go for something really random that we never have. Um... Uh, team Skull Boss. Let's do that. I love the Team Skull music. We hardly ever have it on here. So, we'll lock in with that. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. If it does, I'm just going to cut it right here and we'll come right back to when we do find our next... Oh! Like Magic from Japan. We've got our next opponent. Looks like a rock star. Playing... Uh, ooh, I believe this is Graham's team. I believe it might be. It might be the QR code team, but we'll get into it right now. So our next opponent is running the Medichamp, the Kyogre, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Lunala, and Nialigo. So what are we going to watch out for here? Definitely the Mega Medichamp and the Lunala lead because that is a solid lead for my opponent to get set up, set the tailwind up, get that Kyogre in a really nice position to start doing a lot of damage there in this game. Um, if we can deal with the Medicham, Dialga does amazing against pretty much most of these Pokemon, probably excluding the Lunala that we need to they need to watch out for. So, um, I do want to lead with Giratina for sure because we can't be faked out. We can match the Tailwind as well, which is always good. Um, Mega Medichamp, I'm pretty sure goes to 110 speed, doesn't it? So we'll add speed in Hmm. Um. Could we bait them into faking something out unnecessarily so we can get a tailwind set up? Um, hmm. Let's go Inferno because I think Inferno will be useful here anyway. Oh, actually, let's go Gallade. Let's go for Alligator and let's go Dialga. Yeah, let's lock in. My thinking is to switch out Gallade turn one into for alligator so we've got that crunch the next turn into lunala might work we've got to work around it it's a very strong team there's the there's the famous lead infamous lead here we go so um would you be tempted though to just go for the knockout straight into lunala i don't know I don't know, would you? But I'm going to go for the Tailwind regardless. And do I Mega Revolve and just go for a knockoff into Lunala? I 
think I'm kind of tempted just to do that, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. Because if they do just attack into the Giratini here, then we get, we break the Shadow Shield, and then the next turn we can pick up the knockout there. I'm not really worried about the Medicham picking up a knockout onto Glade. It shouldn't be able to. Um can do a lot of damage for sure. So we're going to see a Mega Medichamp evolve. And there's Glade. Mega evolving. I'm likely just to see a fake out into the Glade though, I would imagine. Glade's such a cool Pokemon. It's got like, an, like a fixed cape to it, hasn't it? There's a fake out. Yep. Yeah. But we can't be faked out. Oh, we're going to see a Z move. Hmm. It's going to lose Giratini here, but it means they're not going to be able to get their their Tailwind up, their speed control, which is so important for this team, I think. Hmm. So it's into the Giratina, so it'll definitely take us down. About 100 times over, unfortunately. A stupidly strong Z move. But like I say, they don't have... Um, access to that. Now this is where Tapu Koko would have been really, really good. I'm going to bring in for Alligator though. Because I'm going to try and Dragon Dance. Um, and I'm, Do I go for the knockoff into the Lunala again? They know it's there, that's the thing. Because we could potentially just go for a Zen Headbutt into the Medicham. Um... But I really don't want to leave the Lunala in check, so I'm going to try and try and, and go for that knockoff there. Because it's likely going to try and get this Kyogre set up, I think. That's like a big goal for this team in general. If you get the, the Kyogre in a Tailwind, it's very difficult to deal with, as we know. Um, so if we can just check the Lunala, anything coming in as well, it's going to take knockoff damage, so I don't mind if it's an Iligo, it potentially loses its item. Kyogre will take chip from it, so I don't mind. And yeah, the Lunar gonna switch out, save itself for late game. Kyogre gonna come in. Okay. Well, I really don't mind this because if we do lose Gilead here, then we get a Dragon Dance up for free, and for Alligator it becomes very dangerous. And then we've got Dialga to bring in as well, um, because for Alligator I'll be able to check that Medicham from this next turn. Okay, so we, yeah, we're gonna get that. And it's high jump kick. Where are you going? Should take it. Oh, we don't take it. Oh, come on. That's okay. I thought for alligator would take that, you know. It's huge power though, I guess. It's why Medichamp's so strong. Okay, now. Hmm, things get pretty tough for us because I don't think we can actually kill. Medichamp with our Mega Gallade. Um, we can go for a Thunder there. Mm, we'll go for a Zen Headbutt. It's the only thing we. It's probably the best thing to do because of the flinch chance. And then hope that a high jump kick misses. That's the, the RNG in our hands, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, if we just protected. For alligator, they maybe thought a bit more about it and targeted the Medichamp, knowing that the Lunala is going to switch out. But there was reason to target into that slot anyway because of the threat of the Tailwind that we know is coming out there. Kyogre going to protect. Yeah, we need a high jump kick to miss. Yeah, we really do. Oh, we need this to pick up the knockout. I you doubt it's going to. Oh, flinch. Oh, we get the flinch. We get the flinch. Okay, we're in back in business. We're back in business. Um, okay, we'll go for that Thunder once again. We'll go for the Zen Headbutt. It's nowhere near, like, okay, Bullet Punch. It's fine. The Kyogre, the Kyogre will outspeed our Dialga, which is the problem. I think, like, we need Dialga to hit first. That's the big thing here. Yeah, miss, 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 miss. We needed to miss. <laughs> I was never going to miss. I mean, we'll be able to, to even up. Well, we're not even up. We're, we're just kind of pulling things back here. 
the thing the problem is being locked into thunder it's not really ideal against oh wow doesn't even take it down like Kyogre is a beast man that specs thunder as well okay tap Coco this is where you really wish we had um yep earth power something like that uh, I don't think we can we can be three Pokemon I'll target the Tapu Koko with a Thunder. We'll see how much that does in a terrain for the specs. But I feel like, oh, we might be losing this one. The Kyogre are going to protect you. It's just madness. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Can we get it in two hits? Oh, we're not even going to be able to do that. Nah. No, no, no. That's a shame. That is a shame. Hmm. There's another Nature's Madness coming out. And an Origin Pulse will be able to pick up the... Oh, well, they're not even going to Ice Beam in this shit to do the trick. It will. Just too strong. And I think a bit of an oversight for ourselves. With the Medichamp play, if we went for that Zen Headbutt, uh, the turn where the Lunala switched out and protected for Alligator, the Medichamp's gone then, and that issue is removed from the field. It does become a bit harder because then we still have to have Coco to deal with, and for Alligator is really vulnerable, and so is Gallade in that situation, so it wouldn't have been straightforward by any means. Um, but yeah, anyway, we've got. We're only 17 minutes in, so we can we can actually whack out another game. So we'll hop straight on. And this is good, because we've got our buttons to activate tomorrow. So we might end up switching the team up a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, let's pick some music. Let's go Recon Squad. If we can get to it, no. We're going to be Team Skull Boss once again. Ah, you locked us in, but we've got our first next opponent pretty quick. So let's hop into Team Preview. Right, we got Dawn Wings and Cosmo and Megalopony, well, I'm presuming Megalopony, uh, Incineroar, Groudon, Amoongus, and Mikro. This looks a lot like David, uh, David's team. They won the Chef, uh, the Bristol Regional Sheffield. Where's that come from? Bristol Regional recently, uh, with the Ultra Necrozma, Megalopony, uh, the Mercro as well. Um, I think there's some difference here because I'm pretty sure that David had. Tapu Koko in his team. I'm not too sure. Anyway, um, yeah, the restricted pairing there, the Ultra Necrozma, Groudon. Groudon's going to be difficult to deal with. I think we'll have to heavily rely on Giratina uh, to help us there. Um, I'm going to bring Mega Gallade, though, because we can't be faked out, of course. So that's always helpful. Always helpful. It helps us against the Amoongus as well, which is nice. Mm, I definitely want to bring Giratina. But Giratina does have its drawbacks. I wonder if we could get away with... Because uh, we need Giratina, I think, to deal with the Groudon, for sure. Um, hmm. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Can we bring Giratina up front? Maybe, yeah. Um, then Dialga, and let's go for Alligator as well. Ah, so we'll bring the new members. Let's see if we can do it in this one. This is going to be a really tricky game. It's like the complete opposite of our opening game yesterday where we had such a good matchup. And it's not looking so good right now. But that's, it's alright. I think delving into the team as well to start with gives us ideas what, with what we can maybe do to change up the team as the week progresses. Which is quite nice. So we're going to see the Necrozma and the Lopony come out for my opponent. Um... Mm. Okay, so let's Mega Evolve and go for a knockoff into the Necrozma. Um, do we switch out Giratina? Because I don't think we're going to... Well, hmm. yeah, the Moon Guys Beam is going to do a ton of damage to us regardless. So I think we're probably better off just protecting here. I don't think a Photon Geyser will take down Gallade. I'm really hoping it doesn't. And the, the Lob Pony can still fake out the Giratina, which probably wants to go for here. Uh, with its scrappy ability once it Mega Evolves. Doesn't look like it is Mega Evolving though. 
Oh, there we go. Hmm. It's weird that it mega evolves after us, kind of indicating that it is slower than our Gallade, which is interesting. Which means we can snipe it with a close combat, potentially. Ah, there it is. Yeah, alternate Cosmo. You can see already, so might protect. I wonder how much a knockoff does to it. Okay, so we just protect Giratina this first turn. There's a fake out. Yeah, into that slot. And, yep, yeah, we get the knockoff. So, do some decent damage there. I mean, when guys beam, oh, it's into our Gallade, which this will pick up the knockout, unfortunately. Mm. Interesting, though, that Gallade was actually faster than the than a Crosma. Hmm. Could we get for Alligator in and try and Dragon Dance? It's probably our only way around this now is to go for the Dragon Dance and go for a switch into Dialga because we're going to be targeted down with the Moon Guys Beam into the Giratina slot 100%. Dialga can come in and take that. If we can get a Dragon Dance off the Feral Alligator in a decent position the next turn to actually target down the Necrozma, or at least check it. So it's going after you. Okay, that's fine. It's going for a Z move. It kind of indicates that you're not going into the Giratina because you would just target the Giratina with the Moon Guys Beam. We're going to have to cut this though, so we'll be back. Now, the Spirit Bomb is into Dialga, so we should be able to take this pretty comfortably. Yeah, I mean, taking it as well as any Pokemon for that Z-move. And uh, for Alligator, getting boosted up. And be able to do some good work now. Um, right. I think we have to target down the Lop Honey with Liquidation. And then we go for um, hmm, what do we lock into? Will an Earth Power get the Necrozma? I just don't think it will. Um, I'm gonna go Dragon Pulse into that slot because Groudon could come in. Okay, this should pick up the knockout. Yep. And I'm gonna see Photon Geyser maybe. Yeah, into Feraligatr, which we should be able to take. He's just scared of the protect there. Yeah, for Alligator taking that like a champ. Uh, the Dragon Pulse now will be able to pick up the knockout there, which is great. So we get rid of those two threats. Now we've got Groudon and potentially Incineroar to deal with. Which kind of makes for Alligator a little bit useless. But we do have Garyotina in the back. Mm -hmm, there's the Incineroar. And in comes the Groudon. Like we expected, yeah. 100%. Hmm. So we're going to get Intimidated, which removes that boost to for Alligator. This is where Earthquake would have been very good on for Alligator, and it was something that crossed my mind when I was when I was putting the set together. I did think Earthquake could be really useful, but then for the discrepancies in the team against things that we have issues with, like uh, Lunala, like Mega Gengar and things like that. I felt like the crunch would be maybe a little bit better. Um, we'll protect and we will just switch in Giratina here. I think the worst thing that could happen for us now would be Eruption Groudon. Because anything else is not really affecting Giratina too much. We're going to see a fake out for sure. We've got to be careful around this um, Infernip, but we're just going to see a Precipice Blades. And what we're going to see... <clears throat> Darkest Lyrit. Yeah. Scouting that switch, I think. That's the thing. Okay. Well, we can guarantee... Hmm. Ah, this is very, very, very tricky. Because we could potentially get... Um, a tailwind up here, but we then definitely lose Giratina, and a crunch is not going to be doing very much to the ground on. Um, I 
Is the tailwind really going to be better? Probably um, the best thing that we can do, I think, to give Dialga as good a chance as possible. And hopefully the crunch does some damage to this Groudon here. Uh, I don't think it's going to be in. Is it miss? Uh, if it missed the Fire Alligator there, that would be ideal, but unfortunately not. Um, and we're going to go down to Darkest Lariat after our Tailwind. It's all about whether or not Dialga can come in and pick up the knockout with the Earth Power and to, to ground on. But the Flare Blitz from the Incineroar is still going to do a ton of damage. Um, hmm. And Groudon has Protect. This is the thing. Groudon has Protect and it can Protect. And this is where I feel like I'm a bit torn. Do I target down the Incineroar? Where we can definitely pick up a 2 hit kill there. But we leave the Groudon unchecked and if we do, Precipice Blades knocks us out. I'm going to have to go the Groudon route. It might Protect. If it does, then I think, yeah, yeah. The obvious Protect, but... It's when you don't click into it, and then you look real dumb for not doing it, and your opponent just picks you off with the precipice blades, and you're like, oh, okay. But I think at this point it's too far gone anyway. We need to get the ground on there, and then this next turn we'd be relying on getting the incineral. I think one of the things we could potentially do is hope that we can get the incineral with an earth power from this range. And hope that my opponent goes precipice blades with ground on and it misses. That's the best we can hope for, I think. There's a lot of hope here. So we get it. Okay, we've got to hope for the Precipice Blades and the Miss. But no, they go Eruption anyway, so just to seal, up, seal it up, seal the deal. Uh, would have been better going for the Incinero the previous turn. But like I say, you're kind of in that position where you don't want to really overcommit to that slot because you do that and then you, you know every time you would attack into the incineral the ground on one protects it's that 50 50 that you're always going to get wrong sometimes get right but never mind we've got three games out of it today though guys i hope you enjoyed all of them we'll be back tomorrow obviously we can activate those bonus buttons tomorrow we've got uh switch up randomizer and a legend maker so if you'd like to see one of those buttons activated and we've got a patreon button as well um do let me know down in the comment section below and we will make sure to activate one of those tomorrow but um stay tuned because we'll be back with more action from this team and i feel like we're on the cusp of getting it right with the team um, if you've got any suggestions for how we want to change things up do let me know sets and other things but in general i'm having a lot of fun with this team this week and i hope you guys are enjoying it so until next time guys take care of yourselves have a great day and i'll see you then so until then bye bye